So we're really excited to talk with you today, not only about the concerns associated with pesticides, but also uh, the strategies that we might use for eliminating their use. As an author and an activist, your work encompasses much. Um, you speak on issues of food security and food sovereignty, biodiversity, biopiracy, as well as the close relationship that exists between pesticides and GMOs. While all of these issues are related, can you speak specifically to the reasons why we should work to reduce pesticide use? Well, the first reason we should work to reduce pesticide use is because they're poisons and there's no place for poisons in our food system. Uh, pesticides came from the war economy mm -hmm. and were deployed into agriculture. They were designed to kill and therefore they still kill, not just other species, beneficial insects, but they kill humans. Mm, pesticide deaths are among a very, very large reason for death in agriculture, and we saw this dramatically on the second night of December 1984, when a pesticide plant had a leak in the city of Bhopal in India, killed 3,000 people in one night, and 30,000 have died since then, and hundreds of thousands are crippled and maimed for life. Um, that's when I started a campaign called No More. Bhopal's plant and neem because there are many ways in which we can do without pesticides. There are alternatives and there are serious alternatives, which is the second good reason mm -hmm. why we should get rid of pesticides. The first is farming practices themselves. If you do good farming, you won't have pests. The occurrence of pests is a symptom of bad farming. It's a symptom. Mm -hmm. And therefore we should get of the real, rid of the real disease, which is imbalance. Mm -hmm. Monocultures are recipes for promoting pests. Actually, fertilizing crops synthetically also increase pest vulnerability, and these studies have been done mm -hmm. by scientists all over the world. Um, because synthetic fertilizers make the plant vulnerable, you then have to use more pesticides to control the pests that attack it. And diversity is the solution. Growing diversity is the solution for pest control. But even if they were for some reasons, pest attacks, we have totally ecological systems mm -hmm. of controlling pests. The neem, mm -hmm. which uh, the campaign that I started in Bhopal in 84, and then had to uh, fight a case against the patenting of neem in 94, ah, an 11-year right. case we fought mm -hmm. and won against the US Department of Agriculture and W.R. Grace. Um, Neem, for example, is a very good pest control agent, and that it's not the only one. Mm -hmm. So there's so many alternatives nature has given us, and in our stupidity and our arrogance, we've turned to the worst option, which is the use of poisons. Very, very good. Uh, so in your book, The Violence of the Green Revolution, you discuss the impact that industrialized agriculture, <coughs> excuse me, has had in, in Punjab. Uh, particularly with regard to pesticides. What are the biggest pesticide problems that India currently faces and what solutions are you promoting through your work um, with Navdanya, is that how you say and, and elsewhere? Well, I wrote the book in Punjab in 1984. I started to write it. It was the same year as the Bhopal disaster, uh -huh. when the Punjab had its disaster of extreme violence, extremism, mm -hmm. terrorism, and the army literally had to be sent to Punjab to mm -hmm. control the violence. Oh, yeah. um, and that's when I asked myself a simple question. The Green Revolution, which was applied here, was supposed to be about peace. It got the Nobel Peace Prize, but this is war. So where is the discordance? What went wrong? Mm -hmm. Today in Punjab, the pesticide use has accumulated so much that all the water, all the food is contaminated. Cancer deaths have become very, very significant in Punjab. And there's a train that leads Punjab, which is called the cancer train. Mm. People are on it to get treatment in a free, in a charitable hospital in Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. Another thing that has happened is, when I wrote the book, the, the debt had just started to begin. and. And the anger of the peasants was showing up in terms of extremism. Uh, farmers were taking to the gun, saying, you had promised us prosperity, you had promised us wealth. We are starting to get into debt. It's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. 
today the debt is accumulated so much that Punjab is one of the four regions which has the highest level of farm suicides. Yeah. And pesticides are one part of that debt. Mm -hmm. And very often farmers end their lives by drinking pesticide yeah. at the end of their lives. Yeah. So it is a vicious cycle of poison. Yeah. The pesticide gets you into debt mm -hmm. and you end your life with pesticide. Mm -hmm. I did a public hearing mm -hmm. of women or widows mm -hmm. left behind. And uh, one after the other, there were 2,000 of them in this temple. And one after the other, they would get up and talk about the husband or the son who had consumed pesticide and died. Mm -hmm. And they call, because they spray, uh -huh. it's, it's not called pesticide, it's called a spray, a spray. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the women would say, and then he drank spray, uh -huh. and then he drank spray. Mm -hmm. Um, so the story of pesticide use in the Punjab is very tragic, much more tragic than when I was writing mm -hmm. my book. The alternatives we have promoted in Nathania are first celebrating biodiversity, which is your best pest control recipe. Mm -hmm. um, if you have diversity in your field, different species create their own pest predator balance and you just don't have pests. Mm -hmm. We have no pests on our farm. Mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about it. In the first few years when we set it up, we used to use a little bit of neem. Mm -hmm. But now that the diversity has thrived, we have more than a thousand varieties of crops growing on our farm. Wow. And that diversity gives, creates home for so many species, for the spiders and the ladybird beetles, mm -hmm. and everything that helps us as humans mm -hmm. in controlling pests right. without us having to spray poisons. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that has really resurged in India is ancient Ayurvedic knowledge. Uh -huh. okay. And in the context of agriculture too. Um, so the reason the cow has been held sacred in Indian agriculture mm -hmm. is because she gives so much besides the soil fertilizer, etc. Mm -hmm. We make a five mi product mixture of the five products of the cow. Mm -hmm. And these five products act both as the best fertilizer you could ever have mm -hmm. as well as the best pest control agent. Mm -hmm. Cow urine is now used on our farms uh -huh. as a pest, wonderful um, promoter, growth promoter as well as pest control agent. And these, the, because the scientists have totally ignored all of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's only as over the years as we've worked with farmers and farmers talk about, you know, we used to do this. Mm -hmm. And we said, let's use it again. Mm -hmm. And let's do it. Let's try it. And in among all the other systems, this works because it's not just a fertilizer, it's fertilizer and a pesticide mm -hmm. alternative. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you do wormy compost, you just make a very, very good um, compost. Right. Or if you do compost. But here, with these products, you're both doing fertility, soil right. fertility, as well as pest management. So the Ayurvedic practices have been used in the past, and what prompted your, um, the, the university or the, the center to, to look back into that because? Well, a very simple basic yeah. recognition mm -hmm. <coughs> that there was farming before the Green Revolution. Right, right. And, and, uh, back to those roots, so. and we, mu and given that the Green Revolution was driven by the chemical industry, mm -hmm. it wasn't about farming, it was about selling war chemicals. Right. And so it has absolutely zero knowledge. But there was another reason we turned to the traditional knowledge of farmers right. and have rejuvenated it. Mm -hmm. One of the classics of organic farming is a book called The Agricultural Testament by Albert Howard. Yes. Now Sir Albert Howard was sent to India in 1905 to mm -hmm. improve Indian agriculture, the typical colonial thinking that yes. all these primitives, we've got to give them these chemicals. And he says, I arrived in India I found no pests in the field, so I threw away my spray gun. I found the soils were fertile, so there was no use for chemical synthetic fertilizers. And I realized farmers in India were doing something that we had lost the knowledge of. I decided to turn the pest and the peasant into my professors. Mm -hmm. For five years, all I did was study what they do. The pest was his teacher. Yes. <laughs> and as a result of it, he wrote the Des agriculture testament, which is called the Bible of Organic Farming. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, it's a hundred years later, and the crisis is much deeper. 
So what can we learn from the peasants? Mm -hmm. Right. That's fantastic. I mean, we really have 